offer pal and uh, I guess right. it uh, started the offers business uh, with apps on Facebook. Um, you know, there is some controversies there uh, with sort of the, uh, uh, I guess, the tension that sort of naturally exists between sort of aggressively making money for developers and, and uh, putting ads in front of consumers, uh, giving them choices about things that they can do, uh, versus, um, uh, you know, the platform owner's desires to, to sort of uh, keep some sort of rigid structures in place. And, and, and so Consumers' interests are looked out for. So, um, that joy, uh, Offer Bell had some of that issue on Facebook, uh, also with Apple in 2011. Um, and uh, uh, where, where are sort of the boundaries uh, for what you can aggressively do in monetizing apps uh, and, and putting things in front of consumers, uh, you know, within the bounds of what the platform orders allow? Yeah, so I, I think that each platform uh, owner, whether you're talking about Android or Apple, they've got a set of uh, curves and, and rules that I think are in place to, well, one, protect the money, and second, protect the consumer experience. And so from, from our point of view, um, we'll continue to be relevant and follow along those guidelines and do things that are good for the consumer. So ultimately, if you're in the business that we're in, which is trying to grow long-term value for your publishers and trying to find uh, great brands and great brand advertisers and connect them with consumers, you've got to do it in the right ways, right? So if you're incenting consumers to do things that aren't in their best interest or aren't relevant to try to get at something, then that, that's not a long-term sustainable uh, thing you want to be doing. And, and so for, from my view, you know, spending a long time looking at e-commerce and good consumer experiences, that, that's the perspective I come at it. It's to, to our publishers, we're all about creating long-term value. And that's either through driving uh, engaged, daily active users and helping them understand how to grow that. And as I mentioned earlier, it's looking at in-app purchases and uh, adjacent revenue streams through uh, advertising and the right way to do that. So, I mean, that's our, that's our core business. And I think if we do it in a way that brings uh, great ad units to bear, the brand advertisers love it because if you look at the... Uh, new experiences we have out there now. I'll talk about our products in a minute, but uh, there's really, really highly interactive ad units that allow you to operate at all levels of the brand funnel, whether it's considering the brand and maybe watching a video, whether it's going a little bit deeper and the brand advertiser says, hey, uh, maybe download my app. Let's say I'm a travel site. I want to get my mobile app distributed. Download it and you know bring it up. Do a search on there. That would be an engagement that you would want to see as a, a brand advertiser that you might want to incent. And that's that's a healthy thing. That's a very good thing. Um, or you're way down the bottom of the funnel and you want to acquire users. We've got GameFly and other uh, advertisers who want to acquire users, and you know we're almost in a lead gen mode. So kind of from my view, um, as long as the incentives that we uh, put in place get the consumer to an outcome that's good for them and it's relevant, uh, then, then you win. And so I think, you know, what's a little bit uh, interesting coming into this is that's important. The consumer experience is important. The incentives have to tie to outcomes that people like. And you got to do it in a way that works for the platforms you're operating on, whether it's Android or iOS. And I think as long as you follow those rules, you're, you're in good shape. And then I guess from the, the when the platform owner would step in when it looks like somebody's trying to say just uh, a developer's just trying to push themselves up to the top of the rankings, and that looks like the only motivation for doing something like a, a incentivized install. Uh, right, and so and so I, I think an, an example that would be, you know, if you were trying to drive a significant launch of your new app, let's say, and this, these happen all the time, and you want to get your app noted and charted, um, uh, what you ultimately want to do is drive users to your app who are going to love it. So if I'm in a baseball app and one of our advertisers is, you know, Hothead Games and they've got fantastic apps, um, if I'm cross-promoting one of their apps that it's going to be relevant and I'm going to connect with and attend, that's that's great. That's a great download. If I'm cross-promoting it to my wife who's not so into baseball or something like that, it's, she's not going to stick and not going to reactivate on day one, day two. So. You know, I think it goes back to the objective you have and making sure that we're being really smart around driving good, highly uh, engaged traffic that sticks around. So uh, where, where has sort of the business settled? Like what, what is most of what Tapjoy is today? Well, as I mentioned, so um, the business today, we're, we're real focused on 
uh, LTV maximization for publishers and doing it in a way where we can connect brand advertisers with consumers. I mean, that's that's our core business. That's what we'll focus on um, going forward. In terms of um, you know how we uh, go to market and make money, it's we feel great about delivering revenue to publishers. So in the last two to three years, we've delivered over two hundred million dollars in revenue to publishers, really at all tiers, right? So you know, there's a few big guys, there's a few very small. You know, two, four person shops that uh, the revenue is meaningful. And so, uh, where I get a lot of excitement is uh, helping people figure out how to be relevant in mobile, how to actually get your app out there, what are the strategies and tactics that work well, what doesn't work so well. And, you know, separately, we can offline, we can talk more about that. But I just think those learnings are very, very important when you're talking about launching your app out there, um, let alone the technology choices you've got to make. Yeah, you're you're uh, sort of moving into some new areas that are interesting as well, where um, you may do a, a secondary sort of uh, uh, promotion uh, with, a, with a user um, if they express, say, interest in watch, watching a video, uh, right. uh, they do that, uh, but maybe there's, there's more you can do that can help monetize uh, something better. So let, let's talk about that. So, um, so as an advertiser, let's say you're McDonald's as a campaign running today. So McDonald's wants you to consider some brand messaging and uh, do it um, at a completely uh, risk-free profile. So they'll, they'll say, how much is this worth to us? And we'll run the video, and hopefully it's relevant, and the consumer will consume it. Well, they may go farther in that same ad campaign and actually will pop a geolocation map. We'll say, hey, I just considered McDonald's. Here's the local McDonald's is around me, and we'll pull that up uh, if we let you, if you let us use your uh, geolocation on your device. If not, you type in your um, your uh, zip code, and we'll pop it. So, so that's great. You're now you're a little deeper down the funnel. And by the way, you could go, uh, you know, all the way down to maybe offering a coupon or something that's good for the consumer. So, I think that's that's one example of where with some of the new technologies that are out there in the native apps, and I'll, I'll talk about our SDK, which is push, but um, it, it allows you to do lots of great things that are uh, low risk, you know, high funneling, very low friction engagement. You can go deeper and. Um, you know, there's some car examples we can give, but you can go deeper in the funnel and uh, allow the consumer to engage with the brand. You know, then you deliver some value at the tail end, which is a coupon. And by the way, that whole experience, um, in many cases, the consumer also got rewarded, right? So if they're playing a game, they got some virtual currency reward. So I think, you know, from my point of view, uh, the whole incented offers in the past maybe, I don't know, had a little bit of a stigma. I don't, I don't know. You know, I look at it as if we're doing stuff that's good for the consumers, it's good for the brand advertisers. And they get the premium content they want. What what's wrong with that? I think that's a great answer. So you, you guys see a lot of things. I mean, you, you're doing a um, a deal with uh, Kakao in uh, South Korea, uh, where um, you, you have in-game ads uh, with them, and, and they soared to more than 100 million users uh, in a very short time. Uh, it's a mobile messaging uh, network uh, replacing uh, text, but the, they introduce games, and, and the games are are just uh, monetizing incredibly well. So what, what do you see there? And what, what do you also uh, think about this interesting idea of, of say, a platform sitting on top of a platform that, uh, that is good for them? Yeah, so, so if you haven't taken the time to read some press about that, I think it's an interesting one. So, so what you have is a little bit of a killer app that deals with peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer social type messaging and uh, that platform um, is very effective at cross-promoting apps and other things that are relevant to you and what your friends are on. And you know, there's other examples of this, but I mean, think about that: 100 million users on that. Um, you know, how did they get that kind of scale? And then you get to the question of, all right, well, how's that driving the money? Well, the driving the money piece is uh, comes in with advertising and, and cross-promotion, and, and there's there's big dollars in that, like huge dollars in that. So we're very proud to be um, one of the key partners that they selected because of our scale and reach and, and kind of experience, but. I mean, you take the Kakao Talk platform and you talk about the role Kakao plays, and I'll call it a meta publisher, right? So if, if we've got a game development shop, let's say in this use case example, and we've got a couple games out there, so we're a publisher ourselves, well, we're on the Kakao network, and because we're on there, we're choosing to distribute through there and, and maybe share some revenue with them. 
Um, and so, yeah, there's another cut that they're going to take in there, but think about the distribution that you could get. And so, I, I just think it's an interesting thing to watch uh, how quickly they grew, and you know, there's some competitive offerings as well. But just that whole meta publisher layer in the mobile landscape will be something that, um, over time, I think will continue to persist. If, if not uh, shrink, I think it's going to expand. You're going to see more and more cases like that, and um, you know, the social element of growing. Um, your, your audience and your friends and bringing you to mobile apps that are relevant, I think is pretty interesting. You guys are sort of middlemen yourselves, I guess, uh, but uh, this idea of a platform on a platform, uh, when everybody takes a 30% cut, that doesn't necessarily sound like it's going to be great. Not a good thing. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, we're, we're a platform player, but not in the sense that um, uh, we're uh, only enabling something uh, that would have been there otherwise. So what we're enabling is a monetization vehicle that wouldn't be there anyway. So you could punch out to other ad networks and try to monetize that way, but uh, that's basically what Taproy really does. So I think the way to think of it is, you know, you've got your, your app store layer and you've got a, let's call it a meta publisher layer like the example we just gave, and then you've got your apps on top of that. So, I mean, the role that Taproy really plays is we, we bring the best of, a uh, substantially scaled ad network, um, and if you look at, I mean, last June the stat was 340 million active apps, like 340 million, sorry, 340 million active devices in our apps right now. That, that's significant scale. So if you're coming at it from an advertiser perspective, it's like, how do I connect that audience in a way that I can achieve my brand objectives? If you're a publisher and you want to redistribute, then we can do that well, well too. So I, I don't view it as uh, an extra cut and kind of a bad thing. I view it as we're bringing to the table the ad network and experience on how to drive revenue from that channel. So there's a lot of talk about wearables now. There's uh, you know new game consoles coming. There's uh, Android devices moving into the living room. Lots of innovation happening on the sort of device side of things. Um, is, is there some innovation happening in, uh, in parallel in, in monetization? Well, I'd say what, uh, and we, we touched on that briefly earlier, um, what, what is clear is the experience in a native app is going to be, in most cases, superior to your browser-based experience. And I realize that's probably a controversial viewpoint, but generally it is. So uh, what, one of the first things I looked at was, hey, okay, so how are our end user ad experiences doing? And uh, the answer was, you know, boy, there's a lot of native features on the phones. I mentioned geolocation, other things that we weren't taking advantage of. Well, I'm pleased to announce in this forum, just last week we pushed SDK 9.1 in a beta. And if you haven't considered that yet, that opens up a whole bunch of different things that weren't possible before in the native experience. Everything from, you know, some standard stuff like MRAID, the latest standard compliance, and BAS compliance, and all that kind of stuff. But, um, I mean, I've had a chance to see all the rich ad experiences, whether it's rich media, let's say I'm buying a car, I get to view the car, rotate it, check, pick my color, let's go down the funnel part farther, let's go find a dealer that's close to me. Right, and you know, do that, and then you go a little farther down the funnel, and maybe maybe it's a lead gen uh, case where I'm going to say, hey, quote this for me. And so, I, I just think that kind of a rich experience where you're multi-layered in there, um, it's really low risk to the advertiser because if they don't get the outcomes they want, they don't pay anything. Um, and to the consumer, it's a great thing. So all that's enabled through uh, the changing tech landscape on mobile right now, and. You know, in our case, it's, it's an SDK that we just pushed, but uh, I just think it's going to be really great as this ecosystem evolves. Now, you're uh, moving beyond games in, in a lot of ways. I guess uh, you started something with a free to free to use movie deal with uh, Screen Media Adventures as well. Is is there some sort of larger lesson from games that the, the larger app community? Well, I, I think the thing I think about is um, in the gaming world. Most have a virtual currency, right? So whether it's coins or you know, there's something going on there in their economy in the game that unlocks premium content. You start to go outside of gaming, and that's not always the case. So let's say you're a, a media publisher and you know you're big in uh, whatever whatever sector. You may have premium content that you want to uh, charge people for. You don't have virtual currency. Like how do you do that? And so uh, that's kind of something on the forefront we're moving farther into, and to a consumer, hey, they're offers. They're, they're relevant offers that unlock premium content. That's the main thing that's good for them. So the way I look at it in the learnings is, all right, how can we make it easier for that to happen, right? How can we actually take um, the power of a tap joy and our offers and offer well, relevance, great ad experience, all that, 
how could you take that to other uh, mobile apps and uh, make it work seamlessly to a user? Uh, you might envision a case where, let's say, you um, interact with some offers and you want to kind of bank that, let's store it. And you go on your TV, your set that box, your TV, and you're going to watch a video with your family. Maybe you don't want to pay the four ninety nine. dollars You could envision a world where you just redeem it with tap joy and just pay for it. So I just say there, there's a lots of possibilities uh, where we can take it um, with the core fundamentals of offers and relevance and ranking and then just do it in a really good seamless user experience. And you know, I think in general, uh, there's, a, there's a lot, there, there's more to be figured out and, and solved and put out there than I think the current state would, would reflect. So we have some uh, questions in the audience.